Do you know what this place is, I wonder? It's pretty magical. It's actually a picture of a school in Edinburgh called George Heriot School. And if you go to a cafe on George Street in Edinburgh and look out the back window, you can see that school and it looks really magical and lovely. And that is where J.K. Rowling sat with her pad and her biro. It's, I think it's called the Elephant House Cafe. And that's where she wrote Harry Potter. So every now and then she would look out of the window at that school and she took and used her imagination to lift that whole school up and take it to the highlands and fill it with magic and invite you all in. And that's what your imagination can do. And today we are going to talk a little bit about inventing magic worlds and how we do that. And I think we begin by looking at something that we love. I've got a picture book here. I've got, this is my Narnia book. It's very fallen to pieces. But if you look at this picture of Narnia, this is Care Paravel in Narnia. And Narnia was written by a guy called C.S. Lewis, who was from Northern Ireland, and who went on to teach at Oxford and Cambridge. And if you look at this picture, it's kind of a mixture of a beautiful medieval Oxford college and the landscape of the countryside of Northern Ireland. He just took two things he really loved and stuck them together. And in fact, late in life, Someone asked him what heaven would be like, and he said, it will be like a beautiful Oxford college picked up and put down in County Down. So he, he, like, so we begin by thinking, where do we want to be? Where do you want to be? Um, because you want to take people with you to this magic world, so it's got to be somewhere that you love. And also you're going to be building this world, so you've got to want to spend time there. So begin by asking yourself, what place do you like? Where are you now? Can you hear the thunder? That's why we're indoors. It's quite exciting. Um, thunder and lightning. Your imagination is thunder and lightning. Okay, so you begin by thinking about somewhere that you love. And it could be somewhere that you wished you could go because you've been stuck indoors all this time through lockdown. Or it might be where you are because maybe home is best. When Frank L. Baum wrote The Wizard of Oz, if you know a little bit about Kansas, which is where he was from, the landscape of the Wizard of Oz looks like that. I'll tell you a story about me. When I was little, I lived in a flat in the middle of Liverpool with my mum and my dad and my brother and my grandma. And I think, as far as I can work out, my grandma had one bedroom and me and my mum and my dad and my brother had the other bedroom. So it was quite cramped. And it was very cramped and there was nowhere really to play. And then one day, in the late afternoon, my mum told told us to come with her and we went and got on a train and we hardly ever went on trains and we went on a train and when we got off the train we were somewhere that I'd never been before it was quite dark the street lights were lit it was a bit like that lovely page in the tiger who came to tea and we stopped at a sweet shop which was just closing and we bought some sweets and we walked on a little bit further and we came to a housing estate and all the houses looked the same and then my mum knocked at the door of one of the houses and I was thinking where are we and what does she know? Who does she know here? She knocked at the door and my dad answered the door. And he brought us inside and he took us upstairs and he showed us a bedroom and said, this is your bedroom from now on. Then he took us downstairs and there was a fire roaring in the grate. And he showed us the back window and there was a garden out the back window. And he said, this is your new home. And that was like, probably the most exciting day of my whole life. Never got over the fact that we moved to this house. It was so, so magical. And when I imagine places now, I often think about that housing estate as a wonderful place to be. There were lots of other children and there were lots of gardens. It's not glamorous like an Oxford college or a fancy school in Edinburgh, but to me it was magical. So when I wrote this book, Runaway Robot, I imagined it all happening on a housing estate. This is the description of the housing estate. Skyways is now the most advanced state-of-the-art housing estate in the world. All the houses are super insulated, super solar heated, super intelligent. When you open the front door, the house says, hello, and it switches on the heating and the kettle. And when it's time for bed, the house dims the lights and switches off all your screens. It's right next to the airport because it all started with the airport. There was a man called old Mr. Shulling who used to build airports in the hangar on his estate. 
planes with names like Excalibur and Guinevere because he loved anything to do with King Arthur. And back then, of course, pilots of aeroplanes were called Knights of the Air. Anyway, his aeroplanes got so popular that the airfield was turned into an airport and then years later, all the round around was turned into our housing estate, the Skyways housing estate. All the streets are named after aeroplanes. This sounds like a nice idea, and I've got to say that Con Concord Circus, Spitfire Street and Gulfstream Walk all sound pretty good. It's just a pity that a lot of planes are named after extreme weather conditions or annoying insects. There's Hurricane Way, Cyclone Walk, Typhoon Avenue and Mosquito Street and Wasp Lane. Uh, the people who live on Mosquito Street and Wasp Lane are always trying to get the council to change their names. Then there are the planes that just had numbers. Try explaining to a pizza delivery robot that you live in house number four on 747 Street or number 52 on B52 Street. We live at number 23 Stealth Street. Stealth was a kind of bomber. And then there are the robots. There are so many different kinds of robots on our estate that it's like a robot petting zoo. Our pizzas are delivered by Pizza Bot, which is like an oven on wheels that says Buen Appetito when it arrives with your pizza. The streets are cleaned by dust hogs, big hedge hockey things that wander around all day sucking up the leaves and litter through their rubber trunks. Then there are little dust hog hatches in the bases of the solar powered lampposts where they're, when their batteries run down they back themselves into the hutches and recharge. There's even a little dust hog dormitory round the back of the community hub where they all go at night after they've discharged their rubbish. Our wheelie bins are also robots. You throw the rubbish in, they sort it out into recycling and non-recycling. Right? That's So I taught my experience of moving to a new housing estate and turned it into something a bit more sci-fi and a bit more strange and set my story there. So I would like you to take somewhere you know and change it. When J.K. Rowling first thought of Harry Potter, she was on the train. She was on a train, the train was delayed, she was bored, and the whole Harry Potter thing burst into her brain. And she was so not ready for it that she had to borrow a pen off somebody. And then the train started up and she got home and she started writing that story. Frank Baum was the guy who wrote The Wizard of Oz. And if you, th if you know anything about The Wizard of Oz... It looks very like where he grew up in Kansas, all these flat fields and bright colours. What happens at the beginning of The Wizard of Oz is that a cyclone comes and picks the house up and puts it down in the magical land of Oz. Just like the train takes you to Hogwarts if you get the letter. So today I would like you to give yourselves the letter to B, to make your imagination into a hurricane and pick your house up and put it down somewhere new and magical and describe it for me. It could be somewhere that you love. It could be somewhere that you wish you could go. It's somewhere that you might never go, the bottom of the ocean or the end of the universe. But take something that you love and take it there. And I'm going to end by reading a tiny, tiny bit of this book, Cosmic, and you will find out why on Friday. Because as ever, what I want you to do is turn up, if you've got time, to a live lesson on Wednesday morning when I will answer your questions. And sometime on Thursday, any time on Thursday before, say, five o'clock, if you send me your stories, I will try to read them out on Friday morning or get somebody fantastic to read them out on Friday morning. Or you could send in a video of yourself reading it out to c.m.roos at outlook.com and I'm going to finish by reading this little bit of Cosmic. This is when our hero, Liam, finds himself on the far side of the moon in a space capsule all by himself. There is no point trying to describe the stars. That would be like trying to describe the molecules of oxygen I was breathing. There were just too many of them. The space between Earth and Moon, that's space. It's the space between things. But on the other side of the moon, that's not space. It's not between anything. That's not space. That's the universe. And I feel like I'm seeing it all, every single bit of it, all at once. And it's huge. There are more stars than there are people. There are more stars than there are anything. Millions. 
billions of stars. And millions of them might have planets just like ours. Ever since I can remember, I felt too big. But now, for the first time in my life, I felt small. Too small to count. Every star is massive, and there are so many of them. How could anyone care about one star when there were so many to spare? And what if the stars were small? What if stars were just atoms in something even bigger? What if stars were just pixels, and the Earth was just one thing less than a pixel? What does that make us? What does that make me? Not even dust. For the first time in my life, I felt tiny. Take your house, take somewhere that you love, your caravan, your holiday caravan, your grandma's house, your favourite holiday place, and turn it into something magical. Take it to the end of the universe. Take it, to, take it on a train to the highlands of Scotland. Change something about it. Make it magical and invite us all in. Let your imaginations be hurricanes. I'll see you on Wednesday morning, 10 o'clock. Thank you and goodbye.